The stock market's drop came after a one-two punch of bad news for Wall Street from the White House and Capitol Hill. On Thursday, President Obama pledged to impose new banking regulations. Late Friday came word that Fed Chief Ben Bernanke's Senate confirmation to a second term might be in jeopardy. Some in Congress blame Bush-era holdover Bernanke for failing to rein in the banks and markets, leading to the 2008 crash. Do you hand the job of rebuilding a house that's been burnt down by a fire to the person who helped set the fire to begin with. Those objections are fueled in part by the public's anger over rising unemployment and bank bonuses. But Bernanke is widely respected on Wall Street. If it, 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 the chairman is not reappointed, the markets are going to react badly. We've already seen that. So the White House is trying to balance what Wall Street wants with that fury on Main Street, which the administration thinks is the reason Democrats lost the Senate seat in Massachusetts. I can knock some heads with this. Yes. <laughs> the president is trying to redirect the public's anger away from the Democrats to the banks he blames for the crisis. I won't stop fighting to make sure there's accountability in our financial system. That played well at the town hall in Hard Hit, Ohio, but it accelerated the stock slide. Wall Street simply doesn't have confidence in the bank reforms the president announced, and it's a vote of no confidence. This evening, it looks like Bernanke may squeak through. The president has been on the phone with key senators who assure him they think they've got the votes. So that could be one less worry for Wall Street. The White House, meanwhile, is playing down David Pluff's return. One official just told me he's been in regular contact with the president. He's a brilliant thinker, and it would be silly not to tap into his expertise. Jeff? All right, Kimberly Dozier with another busy day in Washington. Kimberly, thank you. Joining me now to put the political and economic news of this week in focus are Jill Schlesinger, editor-at-large of CBSMoneyWatch.com, and political analyst John Dickerson in Washington. Good evening to both of you. John, I'll start with you. Was this the president's worst week yet? It was a very bad week for the president. His signature domestic policy program, health care, looks like it is now dead because of the election of Scott Brown in Massachusetts. That election was also an embarrassment for the president and Democrats to lose in their stronghold of Massachusetts. It, the Republicans are now emboldened. And so the president is facing a tough week trying to battle back now with the State of the Union ahead of him. That's also not going to be easy. Jill, uh, Jill let me ask, what happened to the markets this week? How much of that is politics and how much is that just that the market's doing what they were going to do anyway. Well, part of it is politics because I think that the president came out and announced these really new tough bank regulations, and that caught a lot of people off guard. So maybe the timing of that was politically motivated. However, you know, the markets have been up over 60% since last March without a 10% correction. We were down 4% on the week. Seems like a normal breather as well. John, let's talk about that uh, presidential plan to rein in the big banks here. How much of that is a move to counter this populist wave in Massachusetts you mentioned that elected Scott Brown? Well, it's part of that. The president's been working for a while to show people that he gets that they're worried about their economic security. But in Massachusetts, what they saw is something that they've been on the lookout and worried about for a while, which is that people are in the mood to punish Washington for not getting anything that done. The president says, I get that you're very angry. And in this battle between regular people and banks, I'm on your side. He talks about fighting now. He uses the word almost in every other sentence. All right. Uh, speaking of fighting, we'll see what the markets do this week as well. And Jill, we'll end with you. The market lost 4% this past week, the Dow's worst week since last March. What happens this coming week? Well, a lot of it is going to be determined by a lot of economic news that's going to be re released. We're going to have a Fed meeting. We're going to have housing starts. So the economy is going to be driving the markets. That is going to be the potential savior or could see a continued drop as a result of the news that we've seen and economic deterioration. All right, Jill Schlesinger joining us here in New York and John Dickerson in Washington. Thank you both. Thank you.